Hey everybody, it's Bruce with Lebowski Studio and today I'm going for a little plein air adventure. I'm meeting up with a painter buddy that I've painted with several times. Gorgeous weather expected today, at least for the morning time. I have to be at work later. Uh, I want to apologize for not getting more content out there on my channel recently. I've been very busy with uh, getting ready for a show, uh, framing, all that technical stuff that eats a lot of time making frames. Uh, one of these days I'll make a video on how I make my frames. I think that would be interesting and uh, cost saving for some people. But uh, I'm hoping to have some fun and uh, I'll try to shoot some real time video. But usually what happens when I hook up with them is we end up talking a lot and talking shop and all that sort of thing. But hopefully I can get a few minutes of real time and I will do the rest in voiceover. So stay tuned. Bye. Okay, we're rolling up on the area here. Going to be painting at, uh, I think uh, it's called Johnson Pond here at Colby. Here's the view. And that's what I'm hoping to uh, do a painting of today. We'll see. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for uh, joining me for uh, this video. It's uh, been a spell since I've posted one and I apologize for that. Like I said, I've been very busy with uh, some art related things that have taken a lot of time and rather than just put out something quick I want to make sure it has some substance so I apologize it happens sometimes so here I am I'm working on a 9 by 12 tone gray panel I like the uh, gray tone to work on this particular surface was uh, a little bit absorbent with the uh, gesso that I use um, I've experimented, like I have mentioned in the past, with an oil ground uh, priming that I enjoy very much. I think I might just stick with that from now on, Quit jumping around so much. But uh, so when you put the paint on in this stage, it's very uh, it sucks in a little bit as you go along. Uh, there's it's a toss up. You want some absorbency, but not too much. And I don't like a super slick surface either. I think if you're going to go with a very smooth, slick surface, you got to be uh, careful of what you're using, uh, you know, how wet your paint is in terms of having it uh, stick in place, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, for uh, applying paint. Now, the uh, palette I used for this piece was uh, Titanium White, Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue, Cad Yellow Light, some Cad Yellow, a lizard crimson cad red and I do believe I did use a little bit of black also and uh, I like the cerulean blue for some of the greens you can achieve and that sort of thing now something you have to be aware of when you're painting and when I was working on this in the first probably 30 minutes I was like I don't know about this piece I'm not sure if it's gonna pan out uh, the 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 uh, washiness of the block in because of that absorbency of the panel sort of thing I was getting a little worried about it but I think in the end you just have to trust that uh, you can achieve what you need to it's just a matter of uh, right now I'm just kind of getting in some tones to cover most of that gray and that'll give me a base to apply more paint and it was about uh, close to 70 degrees today with a slight breeze. So if one advantage is with the uh, thinner paint, of course, it can uh, dry pretty well to apply these thicker layers. So doing this kind of wash technique, I tend to do this a lot because it gives me a quick little visual map of the painting and uh, gives me some indication if it's going to work or not before I have a huge investment in paint and if I don't like it I can wipe it off at this stage I really don't have a lot invested now here I am applying that little uh, oh I don't I'm no biologist but I think it's like algae on top of the um, water and the in real life of course there's a pretty large block of that algae and as the painting progressed, it kind of bothered me, and I think I think I will uh, be adjusting that later. I did add a few notes later on too. You'll see uh, on the top part of the edge of the pond there 
to tie in with the foreground green so it's not by itself. Sometimes when you have one element by itself, unless it's a focal point, it can be distracting, I think, in a painting. So now I'm applying the uh, a little bit darker layers over the thin layers. And yes, I could have gone over this, could have done the darker la layer first and work in the lights. But again, I'm I'm kind of just building up the layers. I'm I'm kind of leaving some elements possibly of the lighter tone that I just applied underneath, not necessarily wiping out the whole thing. And then you you're having these sort of transparent layers. And then when I do the opaque ones later, you'll see it uh, come to life. So essentially, the the painting is right now going through a very what I call the the ugly duckling stage and it's hard to keep pushing forward because you think what the heck is going on uh, everyone has a different way of working and I don't necessarily work the same way in every painting probably about uh, I would say 80 percent of the time I do but I like to play around that's what I use my planar adventures for uh, I don't get real caught up in looking to f finish a painting on site I do aspire to that in some cases, but especially, you know, if I'm going to be getting into any plein air events and you have to have pieces to uh, put in the uh, exhibition and sale at the end of the event. But for right now, I'm just, it's its my time to play. And uh, I think when I, when I approach it that way, I tend to sometimes do uh, some really good starts out there because I don't have a preconceived expectation so I want to be careful of that and I know a lot of you are probably looking at that birch tree as I painted through it with the water it's okay I wanted to establish some of those tones of birch trees and sometimes in technique you think okay what am I going to use paint the water and then it says it's going to be better if I just continue those strokes across the plane of the tree rather than up to the tree so there's no disconnect and I know that I can blend that into the damp paint that's already there on the birch tree. Now here I am with my dagger brush. I, I, I really enjoy playing around with these Rosemary and Company dagger brushes. It really helps me suggest some of that crumbled kind of dried grass along the edge of, of water. Getting some different values within the grass so then later on you'll see I can apply the icing on the cake I find I do a pretty good job with birch trees I kinda like having the opportunity to experiment with whites especially in nature it's really an opportunity to have them be colorful and if they're too light and white, uh, they'll disconnect from the landscape, I believe, and won't seem to fit in. And of course, they're kind of uh, dirty. Uh, some, you know, it's you're out in the woods, and they're not always pristine either. So now the reflections of the tree trunks, I didn't concentrate too much on that because the way the water was working that day, there were not mirror reflections so I knew as long as I had had a general indication of them as other parts of the painting came along um, I can decide where I want to enhance those reflections so it gives me a starting point to build on later it's almost like I'm taking elements in the scene and building up evenly I don't really uh, I sometimes go back and forth depending on the scene and what I'm painting, but I typically try to bring everything up at the same completion rate and uh, so that nothing kind of gets left behind. I know some artists will say if the birch trees, which in the case will be the focal point, um, are the focal point, they'll really kind of get those first and then work everything else, key everything to that. And that is a way of working. Uh, I've done that a couple times in the past. Everything has its advantages. Now here I am with the dagger brush, angled dagger brush, putting in the different little thicker layers of paint to suggest the undulations and the uh, ripples. And this was a lot of fun to do. 
the trick was to not become too regular with the strokes to try to really maintain a naturalistic feel and I'm, I'm trying to slightly curve them as you see to give a feel of the water coming in from the right and going to shore rather than horizontal because you know I just that that uh, is not my angle of view because this angle of view is actually uh, a little unorthodox for me I don't usually look down on a scene like this too much but kind of made me think of uh, the Monet book I read, Mad Enchantment, where it talks about one of his paintings being uh, a view of the lily pond in such a way you don't see the horizon and it uh, can be, uh, for, for the time, was very cutting edge. And this is actually, if uh, you viewers out there have been watching my videos for a while, I did a 6 by 8 called Homage to Monet of this uh, pretty much the same scene. And it's just uh, was one of those days when I looked over and uh, when we were at the pond, I was with the painter buddy and said, you know, I'm going to paint this again. Different time of season, investigate the uh, birches again and uh, in a, a time of be before actual spring, before the buds on the trees are coming out. I think it's uh, turned out well. And I'm doing this uh, voiceover, too, because I was with the, that uh, painting buddy. And we tend to paint some, and then I'll go over and talk with them a little bit and stuff. So it was um, it's hard in those situations to do real-time video, so I apologize for that. Something else I want to experiment with, too. As you can see, the metal on the brush, the furl. See how it's catching that light off there? I've heard of some brushes out there on the market called, I believe, Gray Matter. I don't know who makes them, but apparently they're, they're specifically made for plain air painters because they're all dull gray and non-reflective. And I thought, that's a pretty good idea. But, as we artists have 10,000 brushes already, I'm not going to invest in a new set. I think I might experiment with a couple options. I might try to take the brushes and maybe with some steel wool or some kind of sandpaper buff that metal a little bit see if I can disturb its shininess try that first any little bit's gonna help because it can be distracting when you're trying to paint um, I didn't have my umbrella up today because it was pretty um, it was sunny but hazy so it wasn't really strong sunlight and also it was a little breezy and I don't want to take that risk of the wind catching the umbrella so I'm trying to learn that yes I have an umbrella but I more often than not try to paint without it just to develop my skill of judging color and value in sunlight and anticipate what it's going to look like indoors I think that's a, a good um, technique to try to develop because we can't always be in shade And I'm excited. This uh, coming weekend, I'm actually uh, meeting up with another painter that I've never painted with before. Uh, she has a YouTube channel, too. Um, and I'll try to put all that information in the description box, but we're meeting in Ogunquit. I'm actually going with the painter I painted with during this video, and we're driving down to meet this other person. And I'm really looking forward to painting in Ogunquit because I've never been there before. Uh, my original plan was hopefully to stay there overnight, but that's just not going to work out. That way I can spend some time. It's not terribly far from the house, but far enough that I can't just shoot down there anytime I want. She wants to uh, paint some downtown buildings, and I want to uh, work on some plain air urban work also. And then after we get done there... Me and Ed will uh, probably go down to the beach or something like that and paint some coastal. I want to get a coastal painting in. I really want to try to expand and uh, offer different types of videos for you guys. And I like the rocks along the main coast. It plays into my structural tendencies with my paintings. Do 
you see me paint buildings and that sort of thing. Starting to bring the birch trees to life. You see how like in the beginning it was going through that ugly stage? You just got to trust. Now I get into uh, bits and pieces of a little more chromatically strong color. And against all those grays that I've mixed, it really starts to sing. And really something to uh, get excited about when it happens. Uh, the dimension in the piece starts to uh, come to life. Now here is the icing on the cake. I've mixed up a lot of paint and I pick it up with my round brush and I just pull that edge of highlight along that birch tree and it just pops to life. I love doing this when you get to this stage in the painting because I have enough patches of color in other parts of the composition. I can now judge how chromatically and what to make this highlight in relation to the other tones and the grass and that sort of thing. And it was just so much fun doing this. And you can see the key is to, you can get away with a few strokes, pick up more paint, get that, that thickness on there because you have some pretty wet paint already on there. So it's going to intermix a little bit. And you'll see a way I get around that later on. To adjust them even more. So just really starting to get that dimension. I try to. I, I find that if you get a couple values, you got a dark, a midtone, and a light in, in a shape. Right away, you can get a sense of realism right off the bat. Then you can nuance the tones within that as long as you stay within the value range. Like anything I put on for highlights now won't be as bright as those highlights on the birches. That's like where the eye is drawn in. And that's why I like the water coming in from the right. Kind of everything kind of pushes in to over there. And I didn't get too wrapped up in creating shadows from the trees onto the ground. Uh, you'll find when you paint outdoors enough. Uh, and subject present different challenges that there's certain things you want to focus on and get in before the light changes or before you run out of time. Here I am getting in some strokes, a uh, little more defined strokes of grasses to add interest, texture to the piece. And having some little higher ones kind of down there, I feel kind of helps so the edge of the pond it does run off to the right, off the edge, and that just helps the eye a little bit to uh, stay going around the painting. Put a few strokes. I don't. I try not to overstroke the paint, so to speak. Here I am putting a couple of the dark spots on the birch trees here and there. Some dots might mix a little more into the wet paint already there. Other times I'll have a little darker paint and it'll be darker spot in the shadow of the birch. Same kind of technique I use for the dry grass along the edge of just putting in some darker strokes within the, the light value, starting to bring out the foreground grasses. Our tendency, you know, our eye can see everything we're looking at because one thing is, you know, you're on, you're on site and you're looking at the scene. Well, wherever you're looking, you can see all the detail. When you forget, like, where you want the viewer, when it becomes a painting, you know, you want to try to keep your detail in that focal area. There are some paintings that I've done that I feel are, there are times when the whole painting is the focus. It's kind of hard to explain, but you know, it doesn't always, there, to me there are no rules, but I find sometimes in the landscape paintings, having some areas obviously be the strongest edges, uh, chromatic color, that sort of thing to draw the eye to different parts is effective. going back and forth to different parts as I bring up the levels uh, to each other a little at a time calls for other parts to be brought up a little bit to keep that relationship of contrast going like how much I want to uh, enhance detail in those supporting areas that sort of thing <laughs> Uh, 
just putting a few key strokes here and there, kind of uh, leaning back and seeing how it looks. This is the time now where I'm just putting in a few elements, pieces, parts, to pull out certain areas. Like I was mentioning, I'll work on the shadows more later on. I really want to get the key elements in uh, for other parts of the painting on site because the shadows can always be manipulated when you get home to read correctly. And I also didn't get too much into the reflections more of the tree trunks, and I'll, I can modify that when I get home also. It wasn't, uh, it's only a couple percentage of, of uh, effect that was uh, needed to be worked on. I don't want to spend time in the field doing it. Bring out a few lights and darks in the grass. And working on the nice delicate limbs of the birch tree. And there was more branches than um, I show in the painting, but you want to be selective and watch out not to crowd the composition too much. The key is to make sure your branches are, are relative to the species of tree that you're painting. You can't just make up branches. They have to flow correctly like the species of the tree, so study them a bit. doesn't mean you need to be, you know, a, a tree expert or anything, but just observe. really gives them some nice uh, angular parts to the composition. So, so far I'm pretty happy with it, except for i got to really you know, adjust that uh, algae, bit of algae stuff there. Modify that a bit. It was really hard to decipher kind of how to structure it. Now here's the icing on the cake I was talking about. This palette knife I carry in my box. I hardly, I, I don't even think I've ever used it yet, but it was very uh, good effect here with putting putting really thick highlights on the very edge of those birches. It really brings them forward. I didn't do it with the distant trees because obviously these trees I'm working on are more forward to the viewer, but also the focal point. So super, super nice effect. Just a little bit here and there. Try not to overdo it. And I like to do things in, in uh, odd numbers so that not just those two trees, but one more tree and uh, call it good. Now here I am using that uh, same palette knife to add some rough texture to the grass that just around those couple burges, I think that adds a nice effect to the piece really really creates that dryness I wanted to the grass so we're going to be wrapping up the painting momentarily I hope you enjoyed this one sorry if it seemed like I talked so much but I really want to share information with you guys on this so uh, if you're new to the channel please subscribe and uh, check out more interesting content I do all kinds of different videos on different subjects so until the next one and uh, Hopefully it will be a Vogun quit. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Okay, I'm back at home. Uh, painting The painting day today was pretty fantastic. It's like 70 degrees. I was able to do this 9x12 and also afterwards uh, start at 6x8. And overall... I think the composition's nice, the little bit of algae or whatever on the top of the water there and little hints of it here and up there. Um, I'm going to cut this down a bit. I, I think it's too big a batch. Uh, it's distracting. I might even take it out, I'm not sure yet. I do love my birch trees. Let me zoom in and see if you can see some detail. I used a palette knife for the very edge of the lit side to get that laid on and also in a little bit of the dry grass. I'll do a little more of that to build up some uh, paint texture, but 
pretty happy with it. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for this painting adventure. I had a lot of fun today, and if you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe. And for everyone else, thank you for checking out my videos. I really, really appreciate it. And, and don't forget to take a look at the Patreon link down below. Help support my channel if you can. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.